discovered that I had cancer at one stage when I went to the clinic with my baby. And I found, you know, I started to feel my breast and I felt a lump. So when I take my baby to the clinic, I just asked the doctor to just examine me and he did that. And then he didn't like it, so he sent me off to do a mammogram. My left foot swollen really badly. Went off to medical associates and um, the main thing they said, you know, we, we're not sure what it is, but we're sure it's cancerous. Went back to England, they still couldn't find anything, just like medical associates, until they did a biopsy about a month later. Then the same evening they called and said, listen, you've got multiple myeloma, usually it's incurable. I was having a lot of bowel problems. I was having little bouts of diarrhea, which I couldn't explain. I thought maybe it was something I ate, this sort of thing. I started to see blood in my stool and I became very frightened at that point and went and had further tests and was immediately diagnosed with colon cancer. It was through my pap smears at the Cancer Society that I discovered I had stage one cervical cancer. It all began when I went to my family doctor and I had blood in the stool. And you know, he didn't wait around. He said, okay, let's not take any chances. And he referred me to a specialist. As diagnosed with prostate cancer, my particular type of cancer was called or termed multifocal prostate cancer. Something inside knew that I had cancer before I actually knew. It's, it's strange to say. I fainted one night. I went to the emergency and the hospital and they told me that I was um, very anemic. They had started giving me iron tablets. So I was taking that for a while and it didn't improve. So I did some tests and they found out that it was colon cancer. I would have thought when I eventually heard of the diagnosis that I would have been just devastated. I'd have just fallen to pieces. And yet, for a change, because I'm not really characteristically like that, I'll get a little excited sometimes. I was very calm. I was um, very scared. I, no one expected that because They'll tell you that you don't start screening for colon cancer until 50. So I, was, I didn't fit that at all, so nobody was looking for colon cancer. It was initially a shock because I was very young and I thought, well, this must be a mistake, it can't be me. But of course, you know, cancer has no age label or uh, doesn't distinguish by how you look. First hand experience is kind of different. You know, because we all know that in Jamaica, cancer is a death sentence. But it's not. And well, here I am. In our culture, it's the, the, the thing is to naturally sort of be beaten and be defeated where, where these things are concerned. But I wasn't going to have any of it. There, was, there is a two, the initial two week, three week period we just sit in the bed and you're thinking, okay, all right, what have I done that I haven't done that I need to make right? Who, who did I, so you, do, you go through all these things. There is an irrational fear. So I started reading and said, well, this thing isn't a death sentence. You know, it, you know, you can still have a normal life. You can still carry on. So what you learn to do after that initial three week fear, you know, you get over it. I started to kind of treat cancer a little bit like a friend in that I was saying, tell me a little bit more about yourself. And that process was done through the research. So having done that, I started to look at the options, the treatment options. The, the best type of treatment for me would, was a radical prostatectomy, that once you, you remove the prostate entirely, and this is what a lot of people, really male people fear, the, the sexual dysfunction and also incontinence that is unable to control your bladder function or your urinary function. Once you have a, a radical prostatectomy, you are going to be faced with this. I have to remove the breast at that time, then go back to chemo again, and then from chemo stage, then after that you have the radio treatment. So, you know, it's a really, it's like, especially the chemo, you really never think that you will be able to survive it. 
you you have to be strong. Your body have to be so strong in order to survive it. One of the first treatments is very painful. The first day is actually actually take out a bit of bone. They actually cut it out, and just to have a biopsy of it. And it's pretty horrid and pretty painful. And I went through this regime of taking some seventy pills a day. Um, and that was solid for three months. And after a while, you, even your throat starts giving up on you and, and, and stuff like that. And it had to be injected and infused into me. Eventually, um, they, we got, I got a stem cell transplant, which was um, which aided and very miraculously here I am back in Jamaica. Which I, to be honest, at the time I never thought I would be back in Jamaica within sort of two, three years, let alone resume resume my career. There's the constant fear after you've had your surgery, you get back your results, you find out what stage it was. I was very, very fortunate that mine was stage one. I didn't need to have any further treatment, no chemo, no radiation, nothing like that. And so I was very fortunate, but I still continued to be concerned about it. There's always that little fear at the back of your mind that it's going to come back. And um, that's the fear, I think, and the fear of the unknown. The, the fear will be there. But we all have to think that very positive, think that um, we are going to get better. Many cancer patients are, you know, surviving past the five year, past the 10 year, even into 20, 25 and 30 year and living actually normal lives. So that has been one huge change. But of course, the stigma of the fear of the word cancer carries through with us. Most people don't want to educate themselves about the disease and if they did they would have a better understanding and knowledge of how to cope with it. People who are diagnosed with cancer need to have hope. It is not a death sentence. Do not let the fright consume you because if the fright consumes you, you are going to take longer to do something about it. So steal yourself, get over that fright and get on with what needs to be done. There is always a little notion at the back of people's minds that you don't want to know. You don't, this can't happen to me, it only happens to other people. Black men in particular, they have this thing about doctors and they're, they're very, you know, well, we don't go doctor, we don't do this or whatever. I would say get checks as regular as possible. Particularly with prostate cancer for men, which men fear the um, digital rectal examination. It's not the nicest examination in the world but it's very important and it just lasts a few seconds just a few seconds of discomfort and it can mean the difference between living a worthwhile life or dying and dying possibly what might be a very painful death if you go now and you find, and it's early you can be cured if you go and it's too late when well, you have to go because at one point you will just have to go if you're gonna lay there dying, you have to go. It's too late, probably. Once you are told that you have cancer, I think your life alters in a way that it will never be the same again, but it does not mean it alters for the bad. Believe it or not, it has, it's humbling. I think it brings you to a greater awareness of how you respond to others and how you respond to life in general. Simple things like the beauty of nature, the beauty of sky, the beauty of sea, the beauty of Jamaica, the beauty of the people. Whatever it is, I think in that respect it brings us back to Mother Earth very firmly. You start looking at, at life differently. Right? Not, in a, not in a bad way, you know. But you, you, you start um, taking stock of where you are and what is happening around you. There is nothing that stresses me out. I now say that live life to the fullest. Live it one day at a time. I think I've changed for the better. I think before I just go out, do stories, and I really don't care. And don't matter, one, I didn't have an opinion one way or another on a colleague or whatever. Now I say what it is in all honesty to, to, to sort of get a nice reaction out of them or get an, an honest reaction out of them. Having had cancer, I can now say there's a lot of positive aspects that can come out of coping with the disease in a systematic and positive sense.